Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today we're going to be talking about the gut hair access. We'll be talking about how your gut health is incredibly important for your hair health. Before we dive in, put your comments down below. Let me know things that you have done to help improve your hair, hair quality, texture growth, etc. Promote or decrease hair loss. Really, can, really curious to know what y'all have done. And before we do, make sure you smash that like button, give me a thumbs up, and hit the bell so you subscribe to get more great content coming your way. All right, so let's dive in. Um, why is the gut and hair so intimately connected in regards to having optimal hair growth? So your hair, right, having healthy hair, you need to absorb good fats and good proteins and amino acids, collagen, biotin. You need good nutrients and building blocks to help your hair grow. So if we have a bottleneck issue with being able to digest and assimilate these really important fats and proteins and minerals, and cholesterol compounds, that's going to have a major impact on those building blocks helping to provide the raw material for healthy hair to grow. Now, of course, thyroid hormone does play an instrumental role. Inflammation plays a big role. Inflammation does decrease blood flow and vascularity to areas, so we need good blood flow to the hair. Low thyroid could potentially affect that. Uh, increased levels of DHT, high levels of insulin, insulin resistance and inflammation. So of course, these are peripheral factors that can affect blood flow and healthy hair growth. And of course, all of those issues, whether it's high levels of insulin from excessive carbohydrate and refined processed food, those same things over here on the insulin resistance side can also affect the gut and create inflammation in the gut and increase gut permeability Increased gut permeability increases chance of autoimmunity. And guess what one of the most popular autoimmune conditions is? Thyroid, Hashimoto's, thyroid problems. So you can easily have a gut issue from food that can create gut permeability that can exacerbate the autoimmunity and thus cause more thyroid problems. And of course, high levels of insulin can increase 5-alpha reductase, which can cause, or which can, um, which can increase that, which can also increase DHT, which can decrease blood flow to the hair. So these are all important variables. Of course, women, as they go into menopause, healthy levels of estrogen and progesterone are important for hair growth, hair quality, skin. If your skin has that crepiness to it, that can definitely, um, that elasticity issue, that's going to be from collagen and building blocks that are, are not in optimal levels. So we have some of the major hormone issues. We have DHT increased by 5-alpha reductase, which is going to be caused by low levels of selenium, low levels of zinc, and increased inflammation and increased insulin resistance. That's one hormonal component. The next one is going to be thyroid. Now, thyroid can be exacerbated by lack of selenium and zinc and magnesium and CoQ10, right? So gut issues on the absorption side, poor diet or poor absorption, that can affect those nutrient issues. On the other side, we could be eating foods that are more inflammatory, gluten, casein, processed refined carbohydrates, right? Soy legumes, right? Pesticides, chemo, all those things increase gut permeability, more gut permeability, Increased autoimmune issue, most popular autoimmune condition, Hashimoto's, that's another one. Of course, we have infections. Infections can affect the gut because it's going to lower enzyme and acid levels. We need those to break down our proteins, break down our fat, and they also increase gut permeability, which goes back to the thyroid. And then um, the next really big component after that, we have DHT, then we have the, the menopausal female, right? We have the lower progesterone, lower estrogen, and I see lots of women with lower progesterone that are still at cycling age that have a lot of bad PMS. So a lot of the hormonal issues, especially peri and menopausal, of course, and then you can still have hormonal issues while you're cycling and have aberrations in your cycle. So those hormonal issues can easily affect hair and skin, and of course, they also tend to trickle down to mood as well. So these are all important connections. So we got to look at these peripheral connections as well. We got to look at the DHT testosterone. We got to look at the the gut permeability. We got to look at the food allergens. We got to look at the infections. We got to look at the menopausal and female hormone cycling hormone issues, progesterone, estrogen imbalances, all very important. Now, my favorite building blocks for hair is going to be collagen. I do at least 20, 30 grams a day for my hair and for my skin and nails. My hair and skin and nails, like my my skin is softer, my nails and hair grow like ridiculously fast when I'm taking lots of collagen. Of course, getting adequate levels of zinc and selenium, maybe 20 or 30 milligrams of supplemental zinc a day on top of really good whole food paleo template. Um, the next would be you know good zinc, 30 milligrams, selenium, 200 micrograms a day. 
really good output there. Um, collagen, you can also do things like silica, things that are higher in silica can be helpful. Um, bigger, bigger, like horse, uh, I think it's horse tails are a really big one. Uh, DE is a really big one. Um, you can also do your fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K are going to be very beneficial. And then also modulating cortisol and stress. So you can do things like natural liposomal curcumin, uh, ashwagandha, things that really calm down and balance cortisol levels because cortisol is very catabolic. So when cortisol is out of balance, it can break down connective tissue, tendons, ligaments. It can ex exacerbate wrinkles, right? When you're having a breakdown of connective tissue, it can affect the hair too. Now you got to look at the cortisol and say, well, am I taking these supplements? Are they getting to the root cause or not? So we gotta make sure if we're using supplements, we're also getting to the root cause of the stress. If it's a sleep issue or an emotional stress issue, or the stress is also caused by food, supplements can also be very helpful because they can really push your physiology in a big direction at modulating cortisol, reducing inflammation. But we are gonna also add in digestive support and add in more collagen, more fat-soluble vitamins, uh, a, D, E, and K, cod liver oil. These are all going to be big, big building blocks, supports, extra zinc, oysters, seafood, all really good building blocks to help grow amazing, high-quality hair. I hope that helps, guys. This is Dr. J here signing out. If you want to work with myself and my colleagues worldwide, we are available. Click down the link below to schedule uh, with us. Also, this is a live chat. Not a lot of docs do live chats like this. So I'm on the spot, so really excited to answer your questions here next. So we'll try to keep it pertinent to the topic. Let's dive in, y'all. All right. I think we answered all. We have no questions today, so I think we did a great job um, hitting all the major topics. So excellent. So if you have any questions, put it down below. We'll come back to this later, and I can answer them later in the comments. Really excited to know what y'all think. You guys keep doing a phenomenal job, and uh, really excited to hear your progress. Make sure you share it with family and friends that may have issues that are pertinent to the hair loss uh, gut connection. Really excited. You guys have an awesome day. Take care. Bye now.